Hey everyone, this video is on polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are molecules that are charged, either positive or negative charge, and contain atoms from two or more different elements. Because a polyatomic ion is also known as a molecular ion, the ratio of the atoms of different elements in the ion is always fixed. And this group of elements in the polyatomic ion will always behave as a singular molecule or group, rather than separate elements. Polyatomic ions always have a unique molecular formula. For example, carbonate ion is a commonly polyatomic ion with the formula of CO3 2 minus, one carbon atom, three oxygen atoms, and an overall charge of 2 minus. In the molecular formula of a polyatomic ion, the subscripts always indicate the number of atoms belonging to each element. So for example, the subscript 3 indicates there are 3 oxygen atoms in the carbonate ion, and the superscripts always indicate the charge of the polyatomic ion. The 2 minus in the top right corner is the overall charge of the carbonate ion. Unfortunately, there is a long list of polyatomic ions that you should be aware of. However, you do not need to memorize all of these for the very beginning. Ammonium ion is a classic cation that you should remember, and there are far more examples of anions. In this video, I'll go through the common examples of anions that you should be familiar with. Let's go through the polyatomic ions involving nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, and oxygen. NO3- is known as nitrate ion. It has one nitrogen atom, three oxygens, and a overall charge of negative. NO2- minus is known as the nitrite ion. It has a slightly different formula of one nitrogen and two oxygen, but it has the same overall charge as the nitrate ion. SO4- minus is known as sulfate ion. It has one sulfur and four oxygen atoms and an overall charge of two minus. SO3- minus has a similar name and a formula. It's known as sulfite ion. It has one sulfur, but three oxygens, but the same overall charge. PO43- minus is known as phosphate, with an A ion, one phosphorus, four oxygens, and an overall charge of three minus. PO43- minus again has a very similar formula and name. It is called phosphite ion. Now, with these examples, hopefully you can see a pattern here. The polyatomic ion that has more oxygens always has the suffix of eight, A-T-E. You have nitrate, sulfate, and phosphate. Now, of course, the number of oxygens in each ion is different. Nitrate has three oxygens, sulfate and phosphate each have four oxygens. But the rule still says the same. The polyatomic ion that ends with A-T-E always has more oxygens than its counterpart that ends with I-T-E. So nitrate has more oxygen than nitrite, sulfate has more oxygens than sulfite, phosphate has more oxygens than phosphite. Despite the different number of oxygens, the charge in each pair of polyatomic ion remains the same. Nitrate and nitrite both have an overall charge of negative one, sulfate and sulfite both have a negative charge of two minus, and phosphate and phosphite both have an overall charge of three minus. Knowing the names, the exact molecular formula, and the charge of these ions is quite important as you will come across these ions very often, specifically the ones at the top, nitrate, sulfate, and phosphate. Now, there are variants of these polyatomic ions where a hydrogen ion is added to it. When we add a hydrogen ion to the nitrate ion, this is known as hydrogen nitrate. And because a hydrogen ion has a positive charge, by adding this positive ion to the negative charge nitrate ion, we've neutralized the charge of the entire molecule. So this is called hydrogen nitrate. However, you know this as nitric acid, as it is an acid. Similarly, when we add a hydrogen ion to nitrite, we've also neutralized negative charge. And this is known as hydrogen nitrite, or more commonly known as nitrous acid. By adding a hydrogen ion to sulfate, which has a negative charge of 2 minus, we've reduced its negative charge down to minus. And this is known as hydrogen sulfate. And similarly, by adding a hydrogen to sulfite, we've produced hydrogen sulfite. For phosphate and phosphite, we have the same thing. We've reduced the negative charge from 3 minus 
to 2 minus by adding a hydrogen ion. So this is hydrogen phosphate, and this is hydrogen phosphate. Now with all of these examples, when we are adding a hydrogen ion, notice how the number of nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, or oxygen remains the same. It's only the charge of the oral molecule that gets changed. It's important to understand where the charge from a polyatomic ion arises from. In the nitrate molecule, where the nitrogen is surrounded by three oxygen atoms, two of the oxygen atoms have a formal charge of negative one, and the nitrogen atom has a formal charge of positive one. Now, I go through the idea of formal charges in the video on Lewis dot structure. Because of the positive charge and two negative charges, they add up to a net charge of minus one. And that's why nitrates has a formula of NO3 minus. For nitrites, only one of the oxygen is negative charged, which accounts for the overall charge of minus one as well. For sulfates, we have a sulfur atom bonded to four oxygens, two of which are negative charged, which account for the overall charge of two minus. For sulfite, again, two of the oxygens are negative charged, which again account for the charge of 2 minus. The structure of phosphate involves a phosphorus atom bonded to four oxygens, three of which has a negative charge, which account for the overall charge of 3 minus. In phosphite, we have a phosphorus atom bonded to three oxygens, all of which have a negative charge, so that's why the overall charge of phosphite is 3 minus. Now, in the beginning of this video, we brought up the example of carbonate, which is a very common polyatomic ion as well. Carbonate contains a carbon atom bonded to three oxygen atoms, two of which are negatively charged. The oxygen atom that is not charged has a double bond with the carbon atom. So the formula for carbonate is CO3 2 minus. Now, very commonly, one of the negative charged oxygen atoms is able to form a covalent bond with a hydrogen ion. And this leads to the formation of a new polyatomic ion called hydrogen carbonate. Again, the carbon and oxygen atoms remain the same, so of HCO3, but because we are adding a H plus ion, we've reduced the two minus charge by one, so the overall charge of hydrogen carbonate is now minus one. So the formula here is HCO3 minus. Hydrogen carbonate is commonly known as bicarbonate. Okay, let's go through some examples of naming compounds which contain polyatomic ions. NaOH consists of sodium and the polyatomic ion hydroxide. So the name of this compound is simply sodium hydroxide. In the second example, we have potassium and the polyatomic ion of sulfate. So the name of this compound is potassium sulfate. Remember that when you're naming ionic compound, the cation always comes first, and we do not need to use any prefixes to denote the number or the ratio of the elements in the compound. Mg, NO3, NO3 refers to nitrate. So this is called magnesium nitrate. Copper, Cu, and it's compounded with CO3, which is the formula for carbonate. So we have copper carbonate. Now here, be very careful, copper is a transition metal, and transition metals often have various oxidation states or valencies. So we need to use Roman numerals in the name to denote what type of copper this is. How do we know this from the formula? Well, we need to know that the carbonate has a formula of CO3 2 minus. So if the ratio between copper and carbonate here is 1 to 1, this tells us that the copper ion must have the same magnitude of charge, which would be 2 plus. Only then, it will be in a 1 to 1 ratio with carbonate 2 minus. So for Roman numeral, we'll have to write copper 2 carbonate. Alternatively, if this was a compound made from copper plus and carbonate, we'll arrive at a different formula. We'll have to swap the charges so they become the subscripts of the formula. We have copper 2 carbonate. So this will be the formula for copper 1 carbonate, Cu2, CO3. Lastly, we have a compound composed of NH4, which is ammonium ion, and fluorine. So the formula for this will be ammonium, which is a polyatomic cation fluoride. Remember, we have to change the anion from chlorine and replace the ending with the suffix of IDE, ammonium chloride. Now, let's go through a few examples. We are given the names of the compounds containing polyatomic ions, and we have to write the formula. So a barium carbonate. Now, barium is in group 2, so it has a charge of 2 plus when it becomes an ion, and carbonate has a formula of CO3 2 minus. Because the magnitude of charges are equal, 
will have one barium ion to every one carbonyl ion. The empirical formula for this compound will be simply BaCO3. This is why it's important to remember the charges of these polyatomic ions. Iron 3 hydroxide. So iron 3 suggests that this is Fe3+. Hydroxide has a overall charge of minus 1. So if we swap the charges and make them the subscripts of this empirical formula, we'll have Fe bracket OH bracket 3. Remember to put a bracket around the entire polyatomic ion to imply that the 3 is applicable to the entire polyatomic ion. So we have one ion to every three hydroxyl ions in this ionic compound. Sodium phosphate. Sodium is in group one, so it has a charge of plus one. Phosphate has a form of PO4, three minus. So if we swap the charges around, we'll get Na3PO4. So three sodium ions to every one phosphate ion. Ammonium sulfate. This compound contains two polyatomic ions. We have ammonium, which is NH4+, and we have sulfate, which is SO4-2-. Again, we need to swap the charges, which is a superscript in the formula, and we have ammonium bracket 2. Remember, the 2 here replies to the entire ammonium ion, not just the element inside it, SO4, ammonium sulfate. This concludes the video on polyatomic ions. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.